This is East Helena, Montana. This town is built under the shadow of its older brother, Helena, which is also the capital of Montana. East Helena was founded around one of the largest lead smelters in the world in the late 1800s. It operated until 2000, and then the smelter stacks came down and all the equipment was removed as part of an eight-year EPA Superfund cleanup project. Originally, the smelter was all this small town was known for. Later on, people thought of our town as just this massive environmental cleanup site. And now, people drive through on Highway 12 and mostly only see this flag pile. But what's really here? Why is East Helena so different from Uptown Helena? What does it mean for kids like me to be from East Helena? I'm Austin Giardi. I'm 16 years old and I've lived in East Helena my whole life, and I dream of becoming a filmmaker. I've been making films since fourth grade and I still do to this day. Filmmaking is easily my biggest passion. Oh, that's awesome! So a few of my friends and I got together to think about what this little town means to us. Our crew consists of Evan Wright, my best friend since age three, who has lived in East Helena his whole life, Aaron Maxness, who I've also known for a long time and who has lived here forever, and Lance Gonzalez, who I've only known for two years and he lives in nearby Helena. Lance is cool. He brings a different perspective and we're glad to have him on our team. Usually, when someone first steps foot in East Helena, this is the first thing they see. A 14 million ton slag pile left from 100 years of lead smelting. And a downtown where there's not a lot happening right now except for a string of casinos. Not much to look at. But our perspective is a bit different. First, we went up to the slag pile. We asked our mayor, Jamie Shell, if he could arrange a tour for us. We actually got to be the first kids to go onto the slag pile. We couldn't believe how massive it was. No wonder it couldn't be moved. But it was cool too, because we got to see all the improvements that had been made along Prickly Pear Creek. One thing that really surprised us when we were up there was how beautiful our town was from this angle. We stood up here and thought about the history of our town, all of the memories that are here, all of the stories we've heard our whole lives about this strong little community. It was cool to see it from this perspective. Oh, and one more thing, how great it is for four curious kids to get a tour of the slag pile from the mayor, but that's East Helena. Anyway, so what I wanted to say was we were just up on the slag pile, and the slag pile, again, is like 45 acres. And it's, um, it's like 3.5 million cubic yards of, of slag. And we, we look at that slag and we say, um, it's useless. It's, it's ugly. It'll never be used. But understand that that hill up there will be worth the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, when the resources of the earth become uh, tapped out. What the mayor is telling us, there might be treasure hidden deep beneath the surface of things. That is true of landscapes, communities, and people too. So we kept looking around. Our next interview was a treasure. Neelia Warden, an 11-year-old firecracker who suddenly became very quiet and still once the camera started running. <laughs> My favorite part of East Helena is Probably, well, it's pretty much all great, but uh, my favorite part is probably the, the much majority of walking places you can go to. Because the schools are pretty close together, so you could just walk there. It's cool. Um, what's your least favorite part about East Helena? Probably the long walks. Another surprising perspective on East Helena came with Jeff Brewer, owner of the Man Store. Yeah, I love East Helena. Mm -hmm. um, the clientele out here is a real loyal customer base. People that have been coming in since day one and uh, they just keep coming back. And it's a great community of, of really nice people. Um, still got the old, um, old school work mentality that's been here forever. 
-hmm. out here you've got your blue collar um, workers and you know you've still got your state workers and stuff that come from out here but a lot more construction workers concrete workers and such um, and just hard working people ranchers um, in town you've got a lot more there's the offices downtown so you've got attorneys um, and then you've got the lower popul lower income population down there um, with God's love and everything around there which is a great clientele they're very very loyal as well but it's just it's a completely different spectrum of business next we went to visit our old friend Ron Whitmoyer superintendent of the East Helena School District we asked him what's the biggest difference he sees between the East Helena schools and the Helena schools I think just the the smallness um, and the community uh, cohesiveness not that that uh, Helena is much different, but because we're a smaller community, um, that smallness lends to familiarity between kids and teachers, um, kids and community members. Uh, I love to say the, the phrase um, in East Helena, in this school district, not only do the teachers know the kids' names, but they know their parents' names and their grandparents' names, mm -hmm. and how, and best yet of all, they know how to call them because they know their phone numbers too. So belonging here is really important. And it's been illustrated for um, decades in this community. We have kids that, that leave here and call themselves the lead heads, the, especially the kids that were here when the smelter was open and operating. Um, they were the lead heads and they stayed lead heads their entire lives. You can go out and ask 30, 40, 50 year old people and they'll still say, hey, I'm a lead head from East Helena. One important thing about Ron Whitmire, he has 1,300 students moving through his school district every year, plus about 600 of us who will go on to high school in Helena. And he knows each of us by our name. He keeps track of us. He gives out hugs and letters of recommendation for college. He makes us all feel lucky to live here. I really envy how close people in East Helena are together. They like seem like a really close group of friends. And uh, this could have just been a personal experience, but living in Helena, I was, it's just bigger, I guess. I was, the whole community wasn't as close, I think. It was just different little groups. So where I lived in East Helena, I was really close to everything that was around East Helena. So one of my favorite things to do when I was younger is my best friend lived about a block down. So we would both go all around town and ride bikes. And I would go with my brother and we'd ride bikes down the gas station like almost every single day. And from the people that are from East Helena, I feel like we're all very proud individuals and we all really like where we came from because the people here are super awesome and the school system is great, but people, I talked to my friends from Helena and they all think it's kind of, uh, to put it, like sketchy, but I think that's kind of the negative thing about East Helena right now is just the image that people from the outside have about it. The stigma Aaron talks about is a part of our everyday lives, but those of us who grew up here see it from our own perspective. The kids here really love the creek, the landscape, and being outdoors together. We really care about each other as a community. East Helena is probably a lot like other small towns in Montana, where the people are struggling to define a new future and figure out an economic plan. But in a little town like East Helena, Kids like us can have a voice, and our perspective is important. We're the ones who will inherit the future, and we're here to help build it.